I've seen a lot of um, people that I know and love walk away from Jesus um, yeah. and not want anything to do with the church or with Jesus. Because yeah. there's plenty of people that you know and I know that, you know, probably believe a certain thing that they don't think they could say out loud, mm -hmm. that they would get fired for saying out loud. What do you think has been the most difficult thing that you've dealt with in, in ministry? Hmm. That's a... And, and uh, let me, I'll, I guess I'll preface it this way too, because like you don't do just do youth. Like a couple years ago, three, three years ago now, maybe you got on the teaching team. Yeah, it was about like four years ago. So four years ago, you were 24 mm -hmm. at a church of 12 or 1300 people getting opportunities like regularly, not mm -hmm. just like on Labor Day weekend or Memorial, you know, when you've got one service and the yeah. youth pastor gets to preach, it's mm -hmm. like, no, no, no. Like Adam's, Adam's the real mm -hmm. deal. And um, I think a lot of people noticed, you know, your heart for people mm -hmm. and for preaching and the, you, like the passion that you had for the word of God. And uh, it was just, it's so admirable. And I love listening to you speak. Um, but I, I also know that can be really daunting as a young, mm -hmm. a younger person mm -hmm. on a couple levels. One, you know, it can be daunting, like scary, like, oh, I don't, Oh, this is a lot of people. I yeah. had, you know, I know people that came out of school after five or six years to to go into ministry and had only preached like a few times, mm -hmm. you know, and then they're getting full time jobs at churches where they're trying to teach like every week, and that's that's weird. Yeah. But for you, you know, you kind of I don't know they 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 let you loose pretty quick, mm -hmm. and like when you were pretty young, not many twenty four year olds are preaching to, you know, twelve hundred people. Yeah. On a Sunday morning, mm -hmm. um, do you think? Yeah, so that that complicates the dynamic. So when I ask like, what's been the most difficult thing, it's not just don't think just youth ministry, right? Yeah, because there's more to it. Yeah, that. yeah, that's a good distinction. I think um, I think of two things. One is I think a little bit more generic. Um, when I was talking to my dad about going into ministry, mm. he um, uh, and this is I'll just make a long story uh, short uh, of it, but he was basically just saying. Remember, you can do ministry any anywhere, anytime, like any job you work can be your ministry. But if you want to go into full-time ministry, that's a different thing. So he really, like, I love my dad and my mom. They were great support systems, but they, uh, and they encouraged me to, like, go into ministry if that's what God was calling me into. But they also were very cautious of, like, uh, just remember that, you know, when you step into full-time ministry, mm -hmm. I mean, you for lack of a better phrase, like you're kind of seeing how the sausage is made. You're seeing behind the scenes and you see not just the best of people, but also the worst of people. And I think that that approach to ministry and church, um, I think is always a little bit of a difficult adjustment mm -hmm. at times. Um, but I think for me, the biggest thing that I struggled with wasn't so much that, and it wasn't even so much like the generic, like tools and responsibilities and how to of like doing ministry. For me, it was like, like personal faith stuff. Mm. Um, because I remember when I was a senior in high school, or I'm sorry, a senior in college, there was a lot of stuff coming out about like uh, moral failures. Like the mm -hmm. big name at that time was like Bill Hybels. Yeah. And I remember that scared the crap that out of me. That was crazy. And yeah. Yeah. like, it seems like every year there's been some sort of name <clears throat> that's, you know, yeah. that's, you know, had some sort of case or uh, falling out or something like that. So mm -hmm. there's that. But then, like, personally, I've seen a lot of um, people that I know and love walk away from Jesus um, yep. and not want anything to do with the church or with Jesus. Yeah. And so uh, I even had a friend tell me one time, he was like, you can't really evaluate your faith because you're in ministry. Like, you're a full-time Christian kind of thing. And so, like, you're, you're navigating all these, like, complexities and these differing, like, thoughts as people are, like, you know, on the one hand— doing different things in ministry, uh, good or bad. And then on the other hand, you have like people you know and love who um, maybe are walking away from faith. And yeah. honestly, like for me, my friends were a big reason why I like, like why I was a follower of Jesus. Mm. I'd grown up in church. Um, and like most people who grew up in church, you kind of have that moment where, you know, you say, I need to make my faith my own. And so I had a time where, you know, I kind of did my own thing, but then I kind of came back. And so that coming back time, um, having friends and people who were followers of Jesus around me uh, was really important. So it like the one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately is 
a very foundational piece of me coming back and, and following Jesus uh, has now, in a sense, almost been removed. Mm. It's not my foundation, but it's a part of like my foundational story. You know, like yeah. my faith isn't built on like these people. And, th- and that was the learning, I think, the learning process of this is learning like, okay, what am I building my faith on? Mm. Uh, and uh, my friends in high school especially were a big part of me building my faith. Um, but as I've gotten older and I've, as people have like maybe come and gone in and out of the faith, just navigating that. Yeah. So does that make sense? No, it absolutely does. I I mean, your friend has a point to some extent, you know, you, you can't, if you're in full-time ministry and you're working at a church, uh, mostly depending on what the, what type of church it is, you know, what network they're part of, what denomination, uh, I would say either, even how politically conservative or, or liberal they are or something like that. Um, I think it's, if we're really honest, no, it is very difficult to ask, to be able to have the freedom to ask questions, mm-hmm. theological questions. And like, why the heck do we, why would we think that somebody fresh out of college would also believe the same thing then that they're going to believe mm-hmm. in 10 years mm-hmm. from then? Mm-hmm. That's 10 more years of study in the Bible. That's 10 more years of online content and reading and learning and growing and experiences, you know, Mm -hmm. which like shape our faith a lot more than I think Mm -hmm. we're willing to admit. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just the word of God. It's like, we're interpreting that through experiences that we have in life with people and all kinds of stuff. So he's kind of right to some extent. Like, I I appreciate that perspective that he could be honest enough to say like, come on, Mm -hmm. like, can you really evaluate your faith? Like, because there's plenty of people that you know, and I know that, you know, probably believe a certain thing that they don't think they could say out loud, Mm -hmm. that they would get fired for Mm -hmm. saying out loud. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be, you know, I think that's one of the downfalls with pastors is you don't have places to ask honest questions and bounce things off of people. And even, you know, some people I know that have, it has been so thrown back in their face, uh, their faith or face Mm -hmm. thrown back in their face, or uh, people have used it as like weapons. Mm -hmm against them, you know? And so when you start thinking like, yeah, I mean, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, how women can serve in the church, you know, or this or that. I mean, suddenly it's like, you're a heretic because you're just, you're sincerely trying to figure out what does the word of God say? Mm -hmm. Because it's not always as obvious as we try to make it. It's not as, it's not as black and white. It's not as clear. So when you're, there's gotta be room, there's gotta be space, man, for figuring that stuff out, asking those questions without being on the chopping block. right? Right. And I think, um, one of the things that I th- I've tried to do to like really help with this for me, uh, again, like whether it's speaking with youth, speaking at worship nights or, mm-hmm. you know, speaking on a regular basis at my church uh, on the main ser- in the main service is being able to like speak in an authentic way where I um, maybe I'm not like completely trans like I don't want to make it sound like, uh, you know, I'm like withholding things. I think there's a difference between being transparent and authentic. I yeah. think. Yeah. Like, it's so important for you to be genuine and authentic, and you don't need to be completely transparent. Like, you know, if I, sh- if I showed everyone everything that I'm thinking and dealing with, yeah, like, right. not everyone, that's not going to be super beneficial, but, like, you can still be genuine and authentic in the way in which that you're thinking about things or wrestling with Scripture. And yeah. that's something I've tried to do, like, in my teaching and preaching is, like, say, look, you know, here's some of, like, what I struggle with and, and lead by... Uh, not necessarily lead by example, but just be honest, like with yeah. our church of, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. You know, I don't claim to. And I think that's really important that pastors and preachers don't try to build this like image that yeah. they're uh, perfect or have it all together or something like that. It's important for, you know, I think the body to see the humanity and the the person that's kind of leading them and teaching them. Yeah. This is going to sound like a weird question. That's all right. How do you think you try to keep yourself like humble? How do you build humility in yourself, mm-hmm. you know, being so much younger than a lot mm-hmm. of other people? Mm-hmm. And this, I don't say that to raise you up on a pedestal or to say you're some kind of like boy wonder type of sure. thing. Like, I'm not yeah. trying to like exalt you in that way, but like, yeah, like you're a really talented guy. And, you know, I think it would be really easy for a lot of younger guys to just be like, man, I'm the stuff. Like, mm-hmm. they wouldn't say it out loud, but sure. they, they would feel it. Like yeah. uh, everybody's just waiting on me to, to pray in you know, my turn, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. How do you, how do you juggle that in your head? Um, 
I, w- I wish I had a great answer for you. I, there's a couple things that come to mind. One is um, there's a guy who actually we were talking about Bill Hybels Church, mm-hmm. um, a guy named Steve Carter. I don't know if you've heard of Steve Carter or not. So he was hired on as like a teaching pastor at Willow Creek okay. during the Bill Hybels situation. All that happened, and Steve Carter was like just watching all this mm-hmm. go down, especially behind the scenes. Mm-hmm took a big issue with it and, and decided to remove himself mm. from it. In a lot of ways, that was like his dream, like his dream job. Willow Creek was one of the fastest, most largest uh, churches in America. Um, Bill Hybels was a, a pretty household name uh, as far as like authors go. And so like he was going to get that opportunity to like grow and develop as a preacher and, and things like that. But he um, has a podcast called the Craft and Character Podcast. Mm. I listen to it from time to time, and he kind of has this line where, you know, it's a prayer uh, where he says, Lord, give, don't give me more, um, I'm going to butcher it, but don't give me more responsibilities that my character can't handle. Yeah. And I think going back to like my time at, at college and just seeing like people leave ministry or have some sort of like moral failing mm-hmm. or something like that, like I just see how like terrible that is. Yeah. And I you know, I don't want that to ever happen to me. So like, I want to make sure that like my character can like handle whatever platform I'm, I've, I've been given. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think that's part of it is just making sure that like, again, not perfect, but like I can have as much integrity as possible. And that to your point, like I can stay as humble as possible. And I think the other thing that keeps me humble is like, it's not me, you know, like, Mm -hmm. I mean, Preaching you put is, in a lot of work. Yeah, preaching do a lot of hard is stuff. done through personality. For sure. But what is coming through the personality is the Holy Spirit. And so, like, I know that, like, and that's the other thing. Preaching will humble you, too. Yeah. Like, you can get up there and think, man, this is the greatest message <laughs> Crushed ever. it, yeah. But it falls flat. And then there's other times when you take your, your crumbles of a sermon that you think it is, and God multiplies it and turns it into fishes and loaves. Yeah, that's bread. so good. And... You're like, all right, like that's yeah, not me, but right, God, right. that's you. And like, but that's so exciting. Um, you know, just that whole thing. And so I, I don't know, man. It's it, I think it's an ever evolving thing, you know, just like making sure you, I guess you're always, you know, humble and giving the right, you know, recognition to yeah, who it belongs to. But 